What's up, s'mores? I'm Shannon Morse. Welcome to my YouTube channel, all about tech news, reviews, and tutorials, along with some travel videos whenever I get the chance to do that. But right now, all of us are self-isolating. Now, I have been working from home, and the benefit of doing my job Threatwire is that I get to read the security news every single day, which I think is great because I'm a security and privacy nerd. So anytime I can read the news, I'm pretty happy about that. I see the new vulnerabilities, the new bugs, new privacy issues. So I also get to see how various companies are reacting to suddenly being jolted into a completely different infrastructure for their users because everybody is working from home now. So how do they manage users remotely if they have never done it before? How do they secure them? What are the best protocols? So today, to help businesses and IT folks who are struggling to set up these networks for work from home, I am introducing a six-part series of videos where I'm going to be delving into identity and access management, which is IAM for short, and why not only passwords are kind of a crap way to protect our online online identities, but also usernames in a sense. So I will explain what IAM is, not AIM, of course everybody used that in the past, IAM, how should companies and users cope with this, how you can learn from past mistakes that we have actually seen, and how you can build a more secure system around your online accounts. And that last part is definitely going to be the part that I'm looking forward to. Now this entire series is being sponsored by WW Pass. I'm super excited to have them back as a sponsor. Give yourself and your company right factor authentication, not just multi-factor authentication. With WW Pass, you can eliminate the need for usernames and passwords by making your smartphone or a physical token your first authentication factor, with the second line of defense being your PIN or biometrics. None of which are ever received by WW Pass. WW Pass takes the security to the next level by helping you set up your users with pass keys, which can be used as electronic IDs to authenticate them and give them access to accounts. Everything is encrypted on the client side, so service providers can't access user data, while data segregation helps protect that data at rest. Instead of using usernames and passwords, which can be easily stolen or incorrectly stored, WWPass uses a universal passkey ID to allow your users proper access to buildings or labs, as well as digital access to applications or data storage. The passkey can also be set up to be used as identification for ID cards, proof of coverage, licensing, and consolidation of identifying documents. Passkeys can be used however your business sees fit, whether that's via a smartphone app, a smart card, or a physical token. Now, by by authenticating users with these IDs that are not human readable, WWPass aims to decrease identity theft and data breaches while still giving users access to top applications that they can use to get their work done. This series would not be possible without the support of WWPass and viewers like you. Check out everything WWPass has to offer over at their website, which is WWPass.com, and I would like to thank them so much for sponsoring my channel. So first off is this identity and access management thing. What is IAM? Companies have actively been moving towards the cloud or some kind of online storage, whether that's via an intranet or not, to store sensitive data. And that's affected all sorts of industries. So companies have needed to change how they do business to keep up with this data-driven future. But since now, these changes include not only employees using their own laptops or smartphones or tablets to access access company data, but also different types of labor that need to be provided different types of access, we keep on seeing companies get totally pwned or owned, depending on who you are. I like to say pwned because they weren't keeping up with the changes. Maybe that's because of a labor shortage or they just didn't do it correctly. The workforce is complex nowadays with companies working with contractors and vendors and employees. I'm self-employed, so I'm always a vendor or a freelancer partners, 
and having employees and everyone should not have the same type of access. Now, ensuring that the right people have the right kind of access to data can be a very big decision maker in whether that company sees in the media headlines like rogue vendor leaks company docs or this company shares rise 4% this quarter, which nobody shares are rising right now, but I feel like it's still a decent example of what could or could not be with a company if they have a data breach. Identity and access management aims to fix this issue with identification, authentication, and authorization. So identifying a user is usually done with a username, which is then authenticated via the server and it authorizes their login with the password. That seems really simple. It's like a restaurant asking for your name to verify that you have a reservation. And if you don't, you don't get a table because that name's used as your password. Okay, maybe that's not the greatest example, but I think you get the point. Now we have used this type of authentication since long before the internet was a thing, but using usernames and passwords with respect to modern technology has been a thing since the 1960s. So there's this dude, his name was Fernando Carbato, who created the original password concept back in the 1960s to distinguish users on the MIT timesharing system, which basically allotted four hour time slots to users, but those passwords were easily stolen by this guy named Alan Scher to get time to get more time around the four hours that he was allotted. Now these credentials did not have encryption at that time. Now we have hashing, salt, we have encryption technologies and protocols which are meant to protect credentials and the data that they can unlock. But these techniques are often broken as well because they are not implemented correctly or they just don't implement them at all. Other than adding encryption, usernames and passwords are generally the same as they have been for decades. They are the access that a user uses to access data, and these two credentials are used as an entry point to wherever they're trying to get into. But they can also be stolen or broken so easily, so why do we still use them? That whole concept has lived kind of beyond its means, so I feel like it's time for a change and a lot of other people agree with me. Now, because of COVID-19, the coronavirus, which is crazy and it has affected our entire world, most of my friends and probably yours as well, as well as myself included, we all now work from home. And as for the ones who work in information security, at least some of them, they are often venting on Twitter about how the companies that they work for have decided to divert their workforce away from fixing any kind of cybersecurity problems that might be in the making so that they can make their networks as fluid and as easy as possible to use. So that of course means that they aren't addressing security issues and are instead focusing on just making it as convenient as possible for their employees to work at home. I mean, I understand. I, I understand why companies are doing this and why my InfoSec friends are venting about it. The last thing that a business wants to deal with right now as an employer is for their employee to not be able to access some kind of core platform for them to do their job. So instead they just share credentials, they turn off multi-factor, they use Zoom, or they just push back important security updates. So we go back to usernames and passwords again and again and again. But why do we do that? I think it's because that's what we know. That's what we're used to. And humans, kind of hate change. We get into our own personal groove and we get comfortable doing what we have done for so long. But that also means that this problem with usernames and passwords, it persists. Passwords get stolen, they aren't encrypted correctly, or they get reused. It's the same thing with usernames. How many of us use the same username across all sorts of websites that we might use? I've definitely done that. Or how many of us use the same email address for the login name for multiple different websites? I've done that too. Even if a password is stored correctly, oftentimes a username is stored in plain text. In fact, whenever I am doing any kind of packet captures with like Wireshark, for example, I know it's old school, but it still works, and you have a PCAP file and you're looking through the information, oftentimes it's super common to see usernames stored or transferred in plain text, even though the password is encrypted. 
encrypted. So if an attacker has a list of usernames, because they're all in plain text anyway, and commonly used passwords that they got from some data breach, they could brute force the password by knowing the username if you use a commonly used password. Usernames can also be used to engineer a password reset or social engineer PII out of a company as well. Now, if you try to sign up for a website with an email address and the site says an account with this email address already exists, I have definitely seen this, an attacker could use that information to try and hack into the email address to get a password reset or force their way into a known account. Since now they know that that email address already exists and somebody has signed up on that website with that email address so they could try to figure out what the password is. Usernames are so often reused because they aren't seen as being any kind of private information, just the password but they are used as a way to identify ourselves online. And that's kind of the problem. So if an attacker uses your username and they find some kind of leaked passwords from that data breach, they could use that to steal your account, assuming that no other protections are being implemented. Now, if an attacker gets a list of email addresses used as usernames for a site, they could also sell that for profit to a spammer that would then clog up your inbox. And this is why many nerds, including myself, use a separate email address to sign up for sites. But still, this is so convoluted. This is such a, an issue and it's kind of a headache and it's annoying to have to remember to use a separate email address every time you wanna sign up for a website. Now, some sites do take a step to secure their users by allowing you to log in with a username and password that is different than the publicly displayed name that you could use. So I could log in with a secret username that only I know or a secret email address, but the link to my profile and my display name could be completely different different. But oftentimes, there's no way to know if a site actually does this until after you sign up, which kind of is annoying, nor is it clear whether the username is securely stored or not. Now, if you recycle a username or an email address across websites, that can allow attackers to find your profiles on all of those different sites or allow advertisers to build a profile about you across all the different websites on the web that you have signed up for. When folks choose usernames that include important kind of details, like maybe your last name, like if you're a student, or a special date, like your birthday, attackers could use those details too to figure out more about you and build a profile around you. So why do we still use them? Because it's convenient. Why haven't we learned? I suspect it's because folks just don't know that there's other options out there. But there are several different options out there that we can use to push us forward towards better and stricter security measures. We just have to be willing to actually do it. So I'm gonna call some people out right now. If you are sitting on TikTok right now, I know you might be. Instead of tightening your security at home, when we have seen this huge influx of attacks happening, seriously, we have seen this uptick of ransomware and malware campaigns ever since the pandemic started. We have seen a ton of them. Trust me, I have sources. Just check out my recent episodes of ThreatWire over on the Hack5 channel if you're curious about those. What are we waiting for? Now's a pretty good and important time to be upping our security steps. I have my 30 day security challenge already on my website, but this right here is the next series that I'm doing about security and privacy. And right now it's pretty darn meaningful if I say so myself. So in my next several episodes, I'm gonna be delving into the different options that we have as solutions that can either replace or add to the concept of usernames and passwords, finishing with how we can build upon this for future technologies. The future is out there and it sounds amazing. So with respect to identity and access management, I would love to know what you would like to see me cover on this channel. And if you have any questions about IAM or password and username management, leave your comments below and I will be actively answering and replying to those. Again, huge thanks to WWPass for the support and I will see you in the next video. Bye.